I meant get your money back. I certainly never meant for you to kill somebody. No. Well, too late, you know, because dude's dead. Oh god. All right, way dead. Oh, Negra y Azul is the next episode after Peekaboo. And as usual with our show, we, we pick up right where we left off. Jesse's in a bad place. He's seriously depressed and freaked out. Are you gonna get back up on that horse? I just want to forget. Just... He feels ineffectual. He feels like, you know, why am I even doing this job? I'm, I'm lousy at it. I can't be an enforcer. It's just not who I am. But much to his surprise and Walt's surprise, people around town are attributing Spooge's demise to Jesse. The game has changed. The word is out. And you are a killer. And people are suddenly paying this guy mad respect. So Walt wants to parlay that into growing the business and expanding it. This is our city, all right? All of it. We up the ante on everything. We're gonna learn that Skylar had a, some kind of relationship with another man. She goes back to work and there's some innuendo about what her working conditions were with her boss, Ted Beneke. The son of a bitch. Oh, Ted Beneke. Well, he's, um, he's pretty cute. Skylar. Oh my God, look at you. Hey, Ted. And I think the two of them, as soon as they see each other, there's that instant reconnection of, oh, oh boy. We should have lunch one day, like old times. Sure. It's important for the audience to see Walt's family, this family that he's fighting so hard for, that he's doing all these things for, to see who they are and to see a little bit more of what's making her tick inside. Agent Schrader, sir. Meanwhile, Hank is uh, moving up in the world based on his shootout with uh, Tuco. He's being bumped up to join a border task force down in El Paso, which is a bigger district office of the DEA. And we wanted to have him face something that would play off of his PTSD, his post-traumatic stress that we had been playing with since the Tuco shootout. And what could he face that would be something that would trigger his reaction and almost scare him off of that path that he always imagined he was going to be, which is, I'm going to be a big guy in the DEA. <sighs> 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 I was proud of us all the day we came up with that one. That was, that was a fun one. When we said, i tell you what, the uh, cartel cuts the guy's head off and they put it on the back of a tortoise and send it across the border. <laughs> Get away! <laughs> hey, welcome to war! <laughs> Boom, and, and it blows up and it turns into Apocalypse Now, you know. And uh, the whole tenor of that scene changes all of a sudden from them, you know, joking, kind of making fun of some stuff. And all of a sudden the whole thing turned with the, with the lift of the head and, a, and the explosion. And that was an interesting day. And that was, uh, I was like, I don't think we're going to be seeing that on any other show this year. Thanks. You OK? Yeah. From the beginning, the idea was that, that there would be another woman in Jesse's life. Jane, she is Jesse's landlord. She and Jesse live side by side in this duplex apartment. Why don't you draw on? Jane is an is a independent, smart young lady who's an artist. She's very talented artistically. She's got a lot going for her. So hey, I got this kick-ass new flat screen. Wanna see? The beginning of their, their relationship is really nice, and it's a, it's a nice break from just like all the chaoticness of uh, just Mr. White and Jesse always, you know, butting heads. 